My goal is to make the transition to Pinnacle Studio easier for you. Hey Pinnacle Studio peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from PinnacleStudioPro.com. Today I'm going to show you guys how to use transitions in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate. Now, as you can see, I have several different types of clips down in my timeline, and that is because you can actually apply transitions to a lot of different types of assets, videos, pictures, titles, audio, all that good stuff. One of the things that I suggest you do before you even get started is set up your project how you want it. And that also applies to the duration of your transitions. So if you want to apply a default duration to your transitions, here's how you do that. You want to go to setup, control panel, project settings, and then you'll find a section called default durations. Under default durations, you'll find default duration for transitions, and you can change the number of seconds and frames here as you wish. Now, this is good for you just in case you um, apply transitions through the effect editor or by right clicking on a transition and sending it to the timeline. And I'll show you all those options, but that's where this comes into play. It will make sure that whatever default duration you set is the duration of that transition when you apply it to the timeline. So now that I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And you can access your transitions from several different places. One of them is from the navigation bar. So if you hover over the navigation bar, you have a section here called content. And then underneath that, you have a section for transitions. This also goes down another layer to favorite 2D, 3D, and so on and so forth, based on the version of Pinnacle Studio that you have. If you have Ultimate, you'll have more options there. If you don't, you'll have less. So if you click on transitions, you'll have transitions show up in the tab that you were on. So now that I'm here, I can preview my transitions by just clicking on one of them. And when I do, you'll see that my preview window changes to source. And if I hit play, it will show how the transition will impact from clip A to clip B. Clip A being the clip on the left and clip B being the clip to the right of that. If I click play, you'll see this just does a cross dissolve to the next clip. Now, if you find a transition that you really, really like, you can right click on that transition and select add to favorites. Once you do that transition will show up under your favorite section. And if you change your mind later on, you're like, ah, I hate this transition. Now you can right click on it and you can select remove from favorites. So you can also access your transitions from the effects editor. So you can get to the effect editor by double left clicking on a clip, or you can right click on that clip and select open effects editor. Now, in order to get to the transitions, you have to pick whether you want it to be a transition in or a transition out. A transition in is a prefix transition, which is on the left hand side of a clip which means that, hey, this is how it's going to come in when we view the clip. It's going to transition into that clip using whatever transition you apply. Transition out is a post-fix transition, which is going to be on the right side of a clip, and that is how the, the clip will transition out into the next transition or the next clip or to black or whatever you choose. So transition in, transitions on the left, Transition out, transitions on the right. So if I pick one of these, let's say I pick transition in, then you see that my selections down here change. I have standard transitions. I have 2D, 3D. 
I have artistic. And these should be very familiar to you because these were the same options that were on the navigation bar underneath the transitions option. So I have all these different types of transitions I can select from. So if I don't select any of them, it's just going to be a regular cross dissolve. So if I drag this out to the left, it changes the transition duration. So if I pick a transition, then you'll see I chose blinds to wipe. And now I have parameters here that I can change. So I can change the softness, uh, the way that the transition progresses. Once again, I can change the duration of the transition here on the um, timeline. So a lot of different options here to actually apply a transition to your clips in a timeline. And it gives you a lot more flexibility because you have these different parameters here. And also if there are any presets that are different, you'll see those here as well. So that's how you go ahead and apply a transition from the effects editor room. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And you'll see here that it applied the transition in and it is on the left hand side of the clip. Now, if I hover over this transition, you see the icon pops up for the transition that I selected. So that's a really good reminder of the type of transition I have applied to this. Now, if I want to change a transition, I can just left click, drag it right on top of it, and it should change it to the cross dissolve. And now if I place my cursor over it, you'll see it's called cross dissolve and it has the icon of the cross dissolve now. It's a really easy, quick way to change your transitions. Now I can also apply a transition by just dragging the edge of a clip. So if I place my cursor on the edge of this clip, you'll see a arrow and you'll see a little carrot there. And you'll see that the edge of the clip folds down a little bit. Now I can hold down my left mouse and I can drag this to add a cross dissolve. Now, if I want to add a clip from up here, I can place my cursor over the clip that I want to add the transition to. I can right click on a transition and I can select send the timeline. And now you see that it adds the transition to the clip where my playhead was. Now, if I want to add a transition to multiple clips, let's go ahead and remove these here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to transition and remove. So let's say I wanted to add a transition to multiple clips. I have this transition here already. So I'm going to select all of these with the lasso by left clicking and dragging my mouse, holding my left mouse down and dragging my cursor so that all these clips are selected. And now I can right click on this clip, go to transition and pick ripple. And so now that transition has been added to all of these clips that I selected. If I wanted every clip on my timeline to have this, let's go back here. I'm going to undo that. So if I wanted every clip on my timeline to have this transition, I can just do control A. Right click on this transition, select transition and then select ripple. And I'll add it to all of the clips. So I'm going to undo that. Now, if you left click and drag your transition, you can select the time of your transition and you see to the right of the icon of the transition that the time is changing as I move left to right is giving me an indication of how long the duration of this transition will be. Even if I let it go, I can come back to it and drag it some more and change it as I want to. You also need to be aware of what timeline mode you're in when you're applying effects. So I'm going to change this to smart editing mode. If you're not familiar with smart editing mode, it basically 
the time I tried to figure out what's the right thing to do when you move clips, change clips around or whatever. So let's say I drag this cross dissolve down here to this clip. Look at what happens to everything on track two. Everything jumps over to the left. So if I had a title above this that I wanted to show, I'd have to move the title over and all kind of stuff. So I never use this mode, but you may like it. It's all up to you. You can see also that the audio track that I have down below it, maybe that's not where I need it anymore because everything moved over to the right. Oh, I'm sorry. Moved over to the left. I got to learn my left from my right. So keep in mind that when you select a specific timeline mode, applying transitions could move things around on your timeline. So here you see that everything jumps over. And if I were to play, drag this out to change the duration, it changes that as well, moves everything over to the side. Just by me changing the duration of the transition, everything's moving. Now, if I play this, or if I scrub the timeline, you see that what happens now is it's fading to this next clip and everything that's happening in this clip starts now. So basically if there's any movement in this clip, you would see it immediately. As soon as this fade started, the action in this clip would be starting as well. So there would be movement or whatever you want to call it happening as I transition into this. Now, if I change this, let's remove this transition. So if I change my timeline mode to overwrite and I add this transition here, nothing moved. You see that my timeline stayed where it's supposed to, but now there's a little purple instead of blue in between. So I could change the duration and nothing on my timeline moves now, but why is this purple instead of blue like it was before? Well, the reason why is because now this is a static frame. The movement doesn't start until I reach this area. This is a video clip. If it was a picture, it wouldn't matter. Before, when I had it and it was blue, whenever this video clip hit the beginning of this transition, it started to play. Now it's actually a static frame and it won't start playing the video clip until this point here. So just be aware of the differences in your timeline mode based on what's going to happen when you apply your transition because they act differently based on what timeline mode you're in. So that's it. That's how you get down with transitions in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. Now I want to send a quick shout out to one of our subscribers, Kressner. Kressner makes videos on his YouTube channel about travel. So head on over to his channel, check out some of his videos, and if you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you want to get a shout out request like Kressner did, make sure that you go to the video description and fill out the shout out request form. If you have any tutorials that you want me to make, make sure that you go to the video description and fill out the tutorial request form. And then I'll make a decision on whether or not I will make that tutorial for you. Now that I'm done with that, there's a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, make sure that you click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, you got any questions, you just want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash the subscribe button and after you do that click on the bell when you do that you receive notifications every time i upload content to youtube and that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun thanks for watching we'll see you again soon